Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood fun with AJ here again today, and today I've got a box. Uh, this is an item that I bought on a Black Friday deal. I usually don't participate in Black Friday, but I've wanted this item for about two to three years now since the company came out. And let me do a quick unboxing for you guys. I'm doing this with one hand, so forgive me on the angle. Got a little return slip. Now, there, I have looked. There's maybe like one review on YouTube right now about this brand. And this is just a big box, but this is. It's a company called Armogan. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Armogan? Armogan? I wanted to show you guys a couple other things before I rip open the plastic. This was ripped. This was ripped. Uh, it just tells me that it's been handled before. Maybe it's been sitting for a little while. It doesn't look like it's been opened. Okay, another quick thing on the back of the box. Uh, I wanted this brand because it said it was uh, made and designed in Luxembourg. But apparently, I must have misread wrong. It says designed in Lux Luxembourg but assembled in China. Now, if you like watches like myself, this might be a big turnoff. Uh, being made in China. I mean, it's not huge because everything's made in China, but just keep that in mind. It's only designed in Luxembourg. Okay, guys, I simply got the plastic off over here, and now it looks like it's a slide box. This feels very nice. It's like a velvet suede texture almost. Less suede, it's a little sh shorter than suede, I'd say. Or Lighter. I'm going to pull out this box. This slide slid right out. So now we have two. We have a cover. And we have the watch case. And this pops up. Give time to passion. See what that means. So you'll see which one I got here. We got a little thank you card. Got a little instruction manual, user guide, support and contact, and they also gave me a warranty card which I took out because it had a certain number on it. Now guys, I'm not sure if you can see, this is a very big, big, big um, case. This is probably, I would say, 42. I think I'm pretty sure that's right. I know the original one they released. So let me tell you a little bit about Armogan, if I'm pronouncing it right. Sorry if I'm not. Um, they released three watch types. The first one was the Spirit of St. Louis. I liked it because it was supposed to evoke uh, one of the original uh, planes that circumnavigated the world. Um, I like the story of the company. Um, this is <clears throat> the second one they released, which is the Lay Mans. Lay Mans. It's after, I believe, a racetrack. And, you know, uh, race car racing. Um, and then the third one they just released probably like two weeks ago. Uh, the La Regatale, I think it's called. I could be pronouncing that wrong. I don't remember exactly the name. But this is the Le Mans. This is the Sapphire. I'll get you the exact name. Hold on one second. The Blue Sapphire S42. I didn't get the Spirit of St. Louis because I, I heard it was 44, and I don't like huge watches. They, to me, that feels like the watches are more of a uh, kind of like a G-Shock rather than a nice, elegant statement. Um, I'm going to go show you guys what a smaller watch size looks like compared to this. Hold on. Okay, so this is more of my watch style for the time phase. This, I believe, is either 38 or 40. I think it's a 38. Um, some call it a little more feminine, but I really like this size. I think it's subtle, understated. Um, and this weekender, just so you guys know, it's Timex. Uh, Indigo, it will glow if you hold that. Um, this didn't come with the strap. It came with like a red and blue strap. I didn't like it. With weekenders, you can do the straps called NATO straps. This is what this is. I bought this NATO strap for like five bucks on Amazon. It has a nice patina with time. Um, but this is more my side. This is bigger now. This is way bigger. I'm not used to huge watches. 
I think the biggest one I've got is like a Movado, which is like a 40 case. This is a 42. So, <clears throat> let's move the Timex aside. Let's talk more about this watch. Um, it's supposed to be a chronograph watch, meaning all these dials are supposed to work. It's supposed to have a stopwatch feature. Um, I'm assuming it's not running right now because they didn't pull the tab to make it run. That's my hope. All their watches are supposed to have a five-year uh, battery guarantee. And I believe it's like a, a year or two-year warranty. Now, once again, this Timex Weekender, it, it cost me like 25 30 bucks. I, I think it's a subtle, uh, cheap watch for someone who's getting into watches like myself. But... It's very understated and it's a classic. I don't think you can go wrong with at least having one Timex in your collection that's classic. It's pretty heavy. Timex is about like a quarter of the weight. This is pretty heavy. I like that. Um, so this is a suede leather band. They have the three dots in it because it's supposed to invoke uh, racing, like race car gloves, and it does to me. However, in the images, I thought the holes were supposed to be fully through like to make it more breathable but apparently not this little band right here feels super cheap but I don't know they sell these bands for like 28 30 euros regularly I believe maybe 34 euros so that's like 40 bucks for a band US um, I'm off a little bit I'm not giving you exact numbers I know um, so this is the back of the watch I hate that made in China sticker right there but I like the design here. No visible scratches. The battery isn't running because they put that little band right there, which is normal on watches. That's smart. The band is a 22. Genuine leather, it says. And, yeah, has their name on the back. These are custom bands. It's a heavy watch. Let's feel the quality weight. It definitely, it feels more quality than Timex, as far as looks. Sorry, I can't focus too well right now. My camera's acting up. There you go. Feels more heavy than Timex, but it's a chronograph, so I believe that it should be. It's got, I believe, 12-hour daytime hand there. It's got stopwatch timer here, and then it's got date there. Let me stop this real quick and show you another angle. Okay guys, that's the watch on me. Um, I have fairly small wrists, but I'm a bigger guy. I'm probably like 5'10", 200 pounds. Um, it, it's a little overwhelming on my wrist. That said, it's pretty nice. Um, I haven't, I've been, I think this is my first or second chronograph kind of watch. And it says how to use them, but if I, like, watch this. Assuming this is normal. So this is how you <clears throat> set the date. It comes in the instruction manual. You pull the crown out to the first position. Make sure the time is not between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. And start rolling counterclockwise. Once you're done, push it in. The push the dial in the, what's it called, crown. How do you set the time? Go here. Sorry. Setting the time. Pull the crown out to the second position. Sorry for the. Let's see if I can get that fixed. Focus. Setting the time. Pull the crown out to the second position. Turn the crown to set the hour or minute hand. After you're set, push the crown in back to normal position. So I skip one and two, go back to one. Okay, we've got some additional instructions about what the 24 hour hand is and how it works. Um, that's the second small dial to the right here. Um, this is right, it's almost 12, so it's almost 12. Let's see what else we've got here. I'm just giving you guys an overview of the book. Okay, this is what I don't know how to use too well. I am not a watch expert. I'm a novice, freely admitting. Um, so keep that in mind. The chronograph is able to measure and display time in one one seconds united to maximum up to 
11 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds, measuring time. Here's a little story that I was telling you guys about the watch, the Lehmann's, Lehmann's, Lehmann, depending on how you pronounce it, I think it's French. Uh, this uses a Japanese quartz movement, which Citizen uses as well. So, I need to practice using the chronograph on this watch. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I know it's like a stopwatch, but I'm not exactly sure I'm using it right. Once again, this is like my fourth or fifth watch ever. I'm new to the watch um, arena. That said, um, I, I'm going to give you guys a... Since there's no other reviews on YouTube about this watch other than one just trying to sell it, I'm going to give you guys an honest review based on my first pretty much 30 minutes with this watch. Um, the feel is tremendous. Uh, it feels like quality. It doesn't feel cheap. I have like one really cheap like $5 watch from Amazon. Uh, I forget the name of the company, but it, it looks good. It has a blue dial, but it's super cheap compared to this. Um, this feels way better than the Timex as well. I mean, it feels on par. It feels better than the Timex. And the Timex is a good brand. I mean, it's not like a $1,000 brand, but... You can buy some quality pieces. It feels better than my Timex Weekender by far. It feels heavier. It feels like a piece of equipment, which I like. Um, all the A, B chronograph buttons and the crown feel quality to me. They don't feel cheap. They don't feel like they're going to break. The The strap band, uh, jury's out. I feel like it's kind of cheap, even though it has the look. I feel like it doesn't have the look they showed online. I thought the holes were all, all the way through, but they're not, which is fine, but it just feels not as quality. Um, sorry, my camera's not focusing that well. Uh, a big letdown for me is the fact that the watch is made in China. I'm, I'm assuming they do that because it's cheaper and it saves them on parts, but I'm a bit let down. I thought they were made in Luxembourg, and let me tell you why I'm really let down about this. I wanted... Not this specific watch, but I wanted to try their brand for about three years now. Um, finally had a Black Friday sale, and the watch went 45% off, even though they said it was 50 Uh Originally, $220. I uh, got it for like $100. Um, actually, it was, it was more than 100 It was like $120. Um, that said, free shipping. It, it was... It's a watch I wanted for a while. This is going to stay in my collection. Do I think it's as good as a nice, nice watch? No. I think it's... I, people might hate me for saying this. I think it's on par, and we'll see how it lasts. But I think it's on par with, like, the brand Movement, MVMD, MVMT, which I'm a hugely not a fan of. <clears throat> I'm hugely not a fan of. Of movement because I've heard horror stories about them removing any reviews under five stars and when their faces start to fall apart after a year like numbers start to come off and the hands start to break they don't honor warranties um, I don't think arm again is like this but I wanted to give you guys a first-hand review um, as far as like the clicking noise the ticking noise uh, Timex my Timex is notorious for being super loud this, I would compare with the Timex Weekender's ticking noise to be about half the noise. So it's it's much quieter. The thing I want to note here, and this is, maybe it's me being picky, but on their, their own website, the dial, it was like a sapphire blue. And it's called, the watch is called, I think, a sa yeah, it's called Blue Sapphire. Here, this looks like a, just a muted blue. There's no sheen to it. Let me show you guys the website on my phone. Hold on. Okay, guys, this is the exact watch I got. It is the Le Mans uh, Blue Sapphire S42. If you can see on the screen here, there's a couple differences. Um, I feel the dial has this sheen that's really nice and sticks out. I also feel that the hands, not the two main hands, but the second hand and the two chronograph hands here, I feel like they, or the smaller dial hands, I feel like they have a nice neon orange kind of feel, so it makes it like pop out. Um, and by pop out, I mean the whole watch. Now, if I go to my watch, now, 
I don't know if you guys can see that sheen with if my camera will focus, but there's a sheen there, I feel. Look at my watch now. 